Hi there, what I'm going to show to you is our Cloud Manager tool and how this interacts with Amazon Web Services and some of the storage capabilities of AWS. So first of all, you're looking here at the canvas and you can already see that we've discovered an Amazon S3 bucket or a region with a number of buckets in it. And that's because we've created a connector. If you look up here, you can see the connector and what this is, is a connector from the Cloud Manager environment using your AWS credentials. And with that in place, effectively means we can discover those existing storage resources and of course, create new ones as well. So I'll go to add a working environment. And as you can see, we can add working environments across all of the major hyperscalers, but we'll focus on AWS. And now you get to choose what type of storage, what type of endpoint is it that you want to create within AWS? Is it a single Cloud Volumes ONTAP instance, uh, an HA pair, or our latest service, the Amazon FSx for ONTAP? So we'll create a Cloud Volumes ONTAP instance, and we'll give that uh, a name. We'll call it AWS Test, and we obviously need to give it a password, and we'll click Continue. So there's a, a number of capabilities we can layer on top of this, this storage service. I'm just gonna switch these off for now, but I will come back to one or two of them a little bit later on in the demo. We get to choose the region that this is gonna run in. I'll leave the defaults for this and some of the connectivity and security. Again, I'll just go with the defaults for now. We'll let AWS manage the encryption. And how do we want to pay for this? Pay as you go, bring your own license, or we offer a freemium version for up to 500 gig worth of storage. So we'll just go with the pay as you go version. And then we get to choose what workload we're looking to support. So this effectively will be the virtual machine type that will sit behind the CVO instance. Um, so you can see here um, for a database and application data workload, we're gonna recommend an M5.2X large. Um, so we'll choose this as our workload. I'm not gonna create a volume at this point. All I want to do is create a CVO, a NetApp system inside AWS for us to do something with later. So we can skip creating a volume. We can confirm that we're happy with all the details. And while I'm on this page, it's worth noting that if you show the API request, this you could grab this and post this into Terraform or some other higher level kind of orchestration framework such that you can drive all of what we're showing you here through APIs. So I'm happy with the details. We'll click go, and then we need to just give that a, a, a few seconds. It's now effectively bringing it online the MD5.2x large instance, and it's gonna layer the CVO instance on top of that. But while it's bringing that online, let's add another working environment. And this time, we'll add an FSx for ONTAP. Again, this is just a demo environment I'm using here, so we'll just go with the, the default credentials that we've got. I'll call this FSx test. And of course we need to give it a password as well. And then we get to choose where we want the nodes, the different availability zones that we're gonna run in. And I'll, again, I'll keep this in the same region as we did before. And we'll pick US East and one A and one B. And we don't need a CIDR range, that's optional for this one. Um, it's already discovered it, it's already got it ready for us to be able to use. So if we click next, again, we'll let AWS manage the encryption. We get to choose how much capacity we want. I'm not gonna go crazy, I'll just make it um, 10 terabytes. And I won't specify an IOPS value here, albeit that we could specify different values if we wanted to. And there we go, there's the details. So if we add that, and give it a second and there it is. You can see that's already come online as well. And this was the system that we created earlier, the CVO instance as well. So as you can see, it's incredibly simple for us to not just bring online S3 endpoints inside Amazon, but also to bring online CVO instances and our latest offering, the, the first party service inside uh, Amazon Web Services, FSx for ONTAP. Now there's lots of things that we could do with this. We can go into these different environments and as we go into them, we're able to start creating various operations. We could add additional volumes. As I mentioned before, I didn't create a volume in this CVO instance. If I wanted to, I can simply add a volume. We'll call it um, AWS test again, or call it test vol. <clears throat> we'll make it 100 gig, and we'll leave the defaults for this. 
Um, and again, just um, specify what sort of tiering policy we want in place and we'll approve the purchase and give that a few seconds and you can see our volumes already online. And with that volume, then we can start doing things like we can clone it to create multiple replicas. We can create snapshots. We can restore from, from snapshots that we've created. And what you can also see up here is a little kind of defender shield. If we click this, it gives us the ability to activate some basic ransomware protection. So enabling snapshot copy protection, but also activating F policy, which means we'll block the sort of known denied file names or the known file names that we associate with ransomware as well. And we can do that regardless of whether that's FSX for ONTAP or whether that's the CVO instance. So let's go back to our canvas and I'll show you one last thing before I finish. And that's DataSense. What DataSense allows us to do is we can configure DataSense that it starts discovering lots of different, um, any of these different storage endpoints. So if we go to configuration, you can see here I can add different data sources. Any file share, database servers, OneDrive accounts, S3 accounts. And once we've added these data sources in, Cloud DataSense will then start scanning the data that exists on those sources. Um, at a high level, it'll provide us governance. It'll give us a visibility to understand what data is on there, how much of it is stale, how much of it is not business related, how much of it is duplicate. It'll also go further into start helping you to understand, you know, inside this as Amazon S3 container, how much of the data is sensitive, personal, extremely personal, sensitive personal. How old is the data? How big is the data? What different file types are we using? And all of these items are actionable. If we wanted to know everything that was over seven years old, we click on seven years old, and that will then give us a list of all of the different files that we've been searching across these endpoints that meet that criteria. This is a great way for you to be able to start to understand what your data landscape looks like. Whether you've got old data, whether you've got duplicate data, or whether you've started to put sensitive data maybe into areas where you shouldn't be looking at it or where it shouldn't be stored. So that's a very high level view of Cloud Manager working with Amazon Web Services.